and seen you. And if we have all the family in here and see it, we will take it from here and we will go.
come. All of those that have been around you during this difficult time, they will begin to resume their everyday activities that they will no longer be able to be found. But God is able to comfort you and God is able to carry you through this difficult time that you're going through right now. The loss of a loved one is not easy. But God is able to help you to be able to carry on just a little while longer. And to the family, we Continue to pray that God will continue to strengthen you. And we, as we come today to celebrate the life of your loved one, I must say I'm somewhat at a disadvantage as I, I did not know your loved one and many of you I don't know. But my responsibility today is to not speak to the dead, but it's to speak to the living, because we all must understand that at some point in time, we're all going to have to travel this road. The Bible has told us that it has been appointed unto man to die once, <laughs> and then comes the judgment. So my hope today is that we'll, we will be able to share a word with you that will cause you to consider if death were to come to you today, what would be your eternal state? We almost understand that this is not the end for Brother Green. Eternity is simply the beginning. Eternity has no end. And when death comes to us, our soul must have some place to rest. Whether it will rest in heaven with God, or whether it will be tormented throughout all of eternity, separated from the presence of God, forever. For God led me to a portion of scripture found in the book of St. Mark, the 10th chapter, verses 17 through 22. And we find these words recorded. Now as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one. That is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he answered and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you like. Go your way. Sell whatever you have and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up your cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word and went away sorrowfully. For he had great possessions. If you will, we invite you to consider 
this thought. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. As we all understand that our life as we know it is all framed by the choices that we make in life. Sometimes in need choices, sometimes we will make the right choice or, if you will, the right decision. And there are some times when we're making our choices, we may make the wrong decision. And we've all made bad choices at some point in life. And sometimes, even as we make these bad decisions, we're able to go back and do what we may call a do-over trying to right the wrong. But there's come, going to come a point in time in life that if you do not make one decision, if you do not make what we consider the right decision, when that time comes, there will be no do-over. So the choice is yours. As to when, when our time comes, like Brother Green, it's our choice individually as to where we will spend eternity. See, we must understand that there is life after death. Many will have you to believe in this day and time that there is no such thing as life after death. But you see, I'm crazy enough to believe that there is because the Bible tells us so. But the choice is yours as to where you will spend eternity. We must understand that if we want to have eternal life and to go to heaven, heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. But the choice is yours as to where you will spend eternity. Eternity. You see, there was a time in the book of Genesis when Adam made a choice. We all know the story, how God created man, placed him in the garden, had everything there that he would ever need. He told him that there was one tree in the midst of the garden that you're not to touch, you're not to eat from the tree of good and evil. God saw that it was not good that Adam be alone, so he caused the sleep to come upon Adam. And from one of Adam's ribs, he created a helpmate. And Adam took her as his wife. And then we all know how the serpent came to Eve and deceived her and, and told her that if you eat from this tree, you would not die. So the Bible says that she ate from the tree and she offered it unto Adam. Adam made a choice. He made a decision. After God had already instructed him not to partake of that tree, he made the decision to eat from that tree. And the scripture tells us of the punishment that was cast upon the serpent and the woman and the man because of their disobedience. He made a choice. And we all today, we have the opportunity to make a decision, to, to make a choice as to where we will spend eternity. And as I said, I, 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 I'm at a disadvantage. I, I don't know what your relationship may be with God. I don't know what type of relationship Brother Green had with God. But you know, you know Brother Green. You know the life that he lived. But no matter what Brother Green's decision was, that's not going to benefit you. 
when your time comes to travel this way. We find in the scripture where there was a young rich ruler. And I can imagine when we see the word rich, he had everything that he could possibly need or want at his disposal. But there was one thing that this young man wanted to know. That let me get up to know or understand that no matter how much money you may have, you still at some point in life come to the realization that there is something that you're going to need beyond your riches. He asked Jesus, what is it or what must I do so that I may have eternal life? And Jesus went on to answer him. And he asked him, said, you know the commandments. And he went on to, to, to quote them, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, and honor your father and your mother. And the young man said that, I have done all these things. I have kept them from my youth. In this day and time, we find that we are in a time now where we do not truly follow the instructions or the teachings of our forefathers. This young man, he, he remembered what he had been taught. But in this day and time, we have now become so busy that we neglect to follow the teachings of those grandparents or some parents that have tried to raise us according to the word of God. They have instilled within us what the word of God says. But we find in a time now where we have become so busy, so preoccupied, that we have began to drift away from those teachings that our forefathers have instilled within us. I've done all these things from my youth, he said. And Jesus looked at him and he loved him. And yes, Jesus loved you as well. He said that there is one thing that you lack. Told him to go and sell all the possessions that he had and to give to the poor. And he will have treasures in heaven. And the Bible said that a young man went away sad because he had great possessions. My question to you today is, what possession that you may have that's prohibiting you from coming to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your personal Savior. You see, we all got something that we're holding on to. Now, God is not asking you to go and sell all that you have and, and give to the poor. We find that Jesus asked this young man this one told the young man this one thing for a particular reason. Because Jesus already knew what this young man's heart was. He already knew what this young man treasured more in life. And it was those possessions, those materialistic things that he was in possession of. And many of us today, we, we treasure materialistic things. We love those things more than we love God. Love those things more than the creator, the one that created all the possessions that you have. We should not love what has been created more than the creator. 
There's going to come a point in time in life that you're going to have to make a decision. When you follow Christ, or when you continue to hold on to those materialistic possessions that you may have, I have failed to see a hearse go to a gravesite, hauling some vehicle, or hauling a bank account. Because those things are simply materialistic. They hold no value. The most valuable thing that you possess is your soul. It values more than your mansion on the hill or whatever type vehicle that you may be driving. But the choice is yours. Whether you will spend eternity in heaven or when you would dwell in hell throughout all of eternity. I've been asked the question too many times. If God loves us so much, if God cares so much about me, why would he send me to hell? God sends no one to hell. If we end up in hell, we end up in hell by choice. God loves us that much. He allows us to make the decision. Just like your loved ones, you allow your loved ones to, to make their own choices. And God is the same with us. He loves us so much that he will allow us to be in control somewhat in our very, of our, our very own soul. After where it will spend eternity. But you're going to have to make a decision. Will I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and as my personal Savior? You see, God's plan from the beginning with Adam and Eve, it was so that man would be able to dwell with him in his presence throughout all of eternity. But because of what Adam did, it created creating a separation in the relationship with man and God. That's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into this world so that we may be reconciled back unto him so that when our time comes to die, our soul will return unto him that we may be able to dwell in his presence throughout all of eternity. I'm reminded of what Joshua said. He told the people, if it's so undesirable for you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day, after whom you will serve, whether it be the gods of your ancestors beyond the Euphrates, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land that you now dwell, but choose for yourself this day. Then Joshua made a proclamation. Joshua said, in other words, I don't care what y'all do, but me and in my house, we will serve the Lord. The choice is yours as to where you will spend eternity. Remember, we all are going to have to go this route at some point in time. We must remember, time is of the essence. I know you may be saying that preachers always talk about that Jesus is coming back. Yes, he's coming back. I don't know when. No one knows the day nor the hour. But he will return. And the Bible says that the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those that are left will be caught up 
in the end. Now, whether Jesus comes back to rapture the church before we die, I don't know. But one way or the other, we will be here when he comes or we will be going on when he comes. But he is coming back. And we have to live our lives accordingly in anticipation of that great day. But the choice is yours. Just as through life in the course of a day we make many choices, many decisions. But the greatest decision that you will ever make will be the determination as to where your soul will dwell throughout all of eternity. What is your great possession that you may be holding on to to hinder you from coming to know Christ as the Lord, as your Lord and as your personal Savior? Now when I spoke of Adam and Eve, I don't know if, if Adam ate of that fruit just to satisfy Eve. But sometimes we will neglect to come to Christ to satisfy a loved one. But at the end of the day, when your time comes to stand before Christ, you're going to have to stand alone. We will all have to give an account of the deeds done in these old bodies, whether they be good, or whether they be bad. But we, we will all have to stand on our own. Grandmama can't be there with me. Granddaddy can't be there with me. We've got to stand alone and answer for the things that you have done in these old bodies. Whether they be good or whether they be bad. But the choice is yours. And I got to admit to you, the greatest decision I ever made when I came to know Christ as my Lord and as my personal Savior. I thought I was happy doing my thing. But I did not ever know true happiness until I came to know Christ. I never knew when was ever able to experience true, true peace until I came to Christ. That would be the greatest decision you ever made. A lot of misconceptions about coming to know Christ is that there's no fun. You become some part of a nerd. But I have more fun now than I ever had. But the choice is yours. The choice is yours. Eternity in heaven. The Bible describes heaven as a place where streets of pain will go. It said that there will be no more sickness, no more death, no more goodbyes. Everything that you will ever need will be there. But it also says that hell is a place of torment, a place of wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now I've even heard that in hell, you will be always reminded of every opportunity that, that you had to accept Christ. Further adding to your torment, knowing that I could have escaped this punishment that I'm now experiencing. But the choice is yours. Where will you spend eternity? For when your time comes, to die. Now is the time.
to make preparation, to be able to go in the presence of God throughout all of eternity. But the choice is yours. What will be your ultimate decision as to where you will spend eternity? As we say, we pray that something was said would cause you to consider your eternal state. Because none of us know where death is. None of us know when death will come unto each and every one of us. So that's why it's vital that we make a decision while we still have the opportunity. It's God's desire that no man should perish. That no one will have to spend eternity in hell. But the choice is yours. What are you willing to give up in order to come to Christ? Because he loves you. If God did not love you, he would not have sent his son on our behalf. So that we will have the opportunity to be reconciled back unto him. But the choice is yours. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you.
final resting place for the mortal remains of Mr. Richard Green Sr. will be in the Highland Heights Cemetery in Kershaw. And we're asking those of you that will be driving in the procession with us to please use your flashes. Drive as closer to the car in front of you as safe to will permit. Proper funeral home, and our law enforcement will carry liability for the procession. So please drive with extreme care. Which way? Okay. 